Let me have your attention just for a few moments tonight. We, we mainly gather around God's Word. Now, I know we like to eat, and uh, we, we gather around tables, and there's lots of things that attract us, but as a church, the main reason we meet is because of, of the Bible, God's Word. And uh, we've, we've heard from Isaiah 9, 6 already tonight. Uh, let's see, how does that, that start? Uh, what's the first line of it? For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. Have you ever noticed the, the contrast there? A child is born, a son is given. To the, the child Jesus, that was, that was his first appearance on earth, but not the son. Jesus has always been the son. He's the eternal son of God. And a, a child is born, a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. And that's our subject tonight, the, the Prince of Peace. I think it's beyond doubt that Jesus is God. Just from that verse. A child is born, a son is given, he's the Mighty God. He's the Everlasting Father. Listen, we don't believe in three gods. We believe in one God. And God the Son stepped onto the pages of, of history as Jesus Christ the Lord, uh, the Savior. The angels said, Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. Now peace is not, in, in this case, peace on earth is not the absence of war. Peace is a person. <clears throat> Jesus was on earth. Peace, peace on earth. The prince. Uh, Jesus didn't establish peace on earth at that time. There there's, was wars then, there's been wars since, there's wars right now. Uh, he will when he comes again. Jesus is coming again. And listen, he won't come as a babe in a manger to die on a cross and uh, be buried and rise again next time. He did that already. Next time he comes as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And it's going to be very important whether he is your king, whether he's your prince or not. For some reason, the date stuck out to me. Uh, this is December the 8th. 78 years ago, on December the 7th, it would have been probably December, well, no, I guess it would have been December 7th here as well. I was, I'm thinking of somewhere else, but uh, 78 years ago in Pearl Harbor, uh, there was an attack, and war was on. Well, about four years later, in August or September of 1941, there was a surrender. It was very open. Uh, it, there was no secrets about it. Uh, it was filmed. Uh, you know, people had to sign. People had to, had to humble themselves and say, we surrender. Unconditionally, we surrender. And, and it made me think about this, uh, this subject. He's the Prince of Peace. Listen, for him to be, for you to have peace with God, it's based on your choice. You have to surrender to God or you have to fight against God. And if you're going to surrender to God, God says he'll be your Prince of Peace. He is the Prince of Peace. Uh, when Jesus came, uh, he established the way of peace. Uh, there's a verse in, in Matthew. Some of these verses, we don't, we don't read them very often, but uh, there's some, uh, they almost sound like fighting words. He says, Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. Now, that's, that sounds interesting. Later on, he says, he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. He had already said earlier, Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven. What he's saying is, you have a choice. You can either confess Jesus as your Prince of Peace, or you can go into battle against him. And I can tell you who's going to lose that battle. <laughs> you don't win the battle against God. You don't win the battle against the Prince of Peace. Peace with God is your choice. Peace with God is also completely unconditional. It's unconditional surrender. Listen, you don't get to decide the peace agreement. I talk to people all the time who tell me what they think God has to do for them. Listen, you don't get to tell God what to do. That's the whole idea of being God. <laughs> all right? You're in charge. You're the top. And uh, when we come to God, we have to completely humble ourselves and surrender to Him. Now, there's, there's two main areas where you need to submit to the Prince of Peace. The first one is peace with God. 
You need to make peace with God. If you don't do it now, the Bible says someday every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. But if you haven't done it in this life, it'll be too late. You'll be separated from God for eternity. In Romans 5, 1, he says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God. Let me say that again. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God. The word justified means declared righteous. Religion is based on the idea of working up our own righteousness. God says, there's none righteous. No, not one. You can't be righteous enough to make peace with God. You have to come and surrender to him and say, Lord, I need your righteousness. I need to be justified. I need to be declared righteous. And that gives us peace with him. It can't be done by being good. You just can't be good enough to have peace with God. We're born sinners. God says in Romans 3, 12, there's none that doeth good. Titus 3, 5, not by works of righteousness, which we've done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. Ephesians 2, 8, for by grace are you saved through faith. That not of yourselves, it's the gift of God. Listen now, not of works, lest any man should boast. Your religion's basically based, basically based on boasting. I'm so good, God should just be glad to have me. Listen, that's not the truth of the matter. We're saved by God's mercy. We're saved by God's grace if we'll just believe him. If we'll just submit ourselves to the, to the Prince of Peace. The Bible tells us that in our natural state, we are at war with God. Do you ever wonder why you don't like people telling you what to do? Do you ever wonder why it's, it's so hard to submit? I mean, even just little things sometimes. It's because we're at war with God. Colossians chapter 1, verse 20, he says, You that were sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled. He's talking about what we were before we became a Christian. We were enemies. We were alienated from God. Wicked works. That was our, our condition. We were enemies with God. He, he says in, uh, that you were in the... He, yet now hath he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. God wants you to be right with him. God wants you to make peace with him. He's the prince of peace. <laughs> That's what he wants, but it's going to be on his conditions, not on yours, not on mine. We need peace with God. It's a very simple peace treaty. God says, number one, admit that you're a sinner, all of sin. You know, we're, we're so self-righteous. I mean, really, we are so self-righteous, and yet God says we're sinners. We need to believe him. Secondly, he says, believe him. If you're going to have peace with God, you must believe him, the gospel, and ask him to forgive you. Well, that's, it's pretty simple so far. And then he says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's a pretty simple peace treaty, isn't it? God says, admit that you're a sinner, believe that Christ died for your sins and rose again, and ask him to save you. Man, you couldn't get much simpler than that. And yet how we resist because we want to believe that we're good and that God should just be grateful that we even acknowledge him. Listen, you need to know the Lord. Someday in heaven, you're going to count on whether he knows you or not. For some, he's going to say, depart from me, I never knew you. You need to have peace with God. The second thing, you need to have the peace of God. This is a wonderful thing. In uh, John, Jesus several times made statements about uh, peace. In John 14, verse 27, for instance, the pages to turn here. John 14, verse 27 says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. He's saying you don't have to live with a troubled heart. Later in John 16, he says, These things have, I have spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. We can be overcomers. We can have peace. Now, it doesn't mean that we'll never have any trouble. It doesn't mean that the world will just have, a, you know, this aura of niceness about it. 
But it does mean you can have peace in your heart, no matter what you're going through. When you, meet, when you make peace with God, you know he's there to help you. He's on your side, and he promises that everything will be all right soon. Like he said, in the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. There's a phrase he uses in, in Philippians that we wouldn't use it much anymore, where he says, be careful for nothing. Say that to somebody someday and see what they think you mean. Be careful for nothing. It means don't worry. Be careful for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God, and the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. The peace of God. It starts with peace with God. You need to surrender. I need to surrender to God. And then in the daily troubles of life, I need God's peace as I face those things. I need to take those things to him in prayer. I need to believe that God has a purpose, that God has a plan, that God has eternity in mind for me. It's like the, the Bible teacher who was held up at gunpoint. The guy said, your money or your life. He said, you think you can frighten me with heaven? <laughs> I mean, really, folks. Uh, when you know the Lord, when you have the peace with the Lord, you can have the peace of the Lord as well. Now, the question I would put to you tonight is this. Who is your prince? Who is your prince? Three times in the book of John, Jesus calls Satan the prince of this world. We're born at enmity with God, and the reason is we have a different leader. We have a different prince. It's the prince of the power of the air, as it's called in Ephesians chapter 2. We're born outside of God's kingdom. When you surrender to the Lord and you make peace with God, Jesus then becomes your prince. He's the prince of peace. Now, in some ways, it's actually harder to follow Jesus. That's what Jesus was saying. He didn't come to bring peace on the earth. He came to bring a sword. Listen, when you choose to follow Jesus, you're choosing to step out of what most people think is the norm. Jesus called it the narrow way. He said there's a broad way. Most people go that way. There's a narrow way. It's harder. But the difference between these two ways and these two princes is where they lead us. The prince of the power of the air will lead you straight to hell. The prince of peace will lead you to heaven. And there's a big difference. Both are for eternity. It requires admitting we're wrong and surrendering unconditionally to him. Our theme this year is thy kingdom come. That's exactly what we're talking about. The prince of peace. He needs to be your prince uh, this evening. I, I don't know if you have that song ready, uh, Because He Lives. Um, don't, don't worry about it. There's, there's a song. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. You know, Submitting to the Prince of Peace will not only help you with eternity, it'll help you with today. You need to have to make peace with God. You need to have the peace of God. He's the Prince of Peace. That's what he wants for you. Let's just pause for a word of prayer, and, and then we'll continue with the, the program this evening. Father, we are grateful that you love us. Lord, in the midst of this troubled world, that we can know you, and know that our sins are forgiven, know that, that you've prepared a place for us in heaven. Father, uh, we don't understand all the things going on, but we're glad that you do and that we know you and that you have things under control. Lord, we, uh, we ask that you'd, you'd help us tonight. Uh, Father, if there are any here tonight who don't know you, if they were to die, would go to hell. Lord, I pray that tonight they'd make their peace with you. Help us to have your peace. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.